Thanks, Julie. And um, welcome to anyone that's joining this uh, second session. Uh, we're very excited to be presenting kind of these career conversations um, to learn more about varieties of paths uh, to what careers can look like within technology or in entrepreneurship. Uh, my name is Shannon Harmon. I'm a senior recruiter for Alexander Technology Group. And I'm really excited to be hosting today's event on behalf of the New Hampshire Tech Alliance. If you're not familiar with the New Hampshire Tech Alliance, it's a statewide organization dedicated to supporting companies, building partnerships, and providing educational opportunities. Over the last year, the pandemic has made changes throughout our lives, but most importantly, we've seen it in our schools. We've watched students and educators embrace technology and learn new ways to work together. Through this event, New Hampshire Tech Alliance hopes to give back to students by providing the opportunity to learn about some career paths and ask questions of professionals who are doing their jobs today. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll hear from Katie Smith and learn a little bit more about her role as a manager of cloud engineering at a company called Fastly. You will have the opportunity to ask questions, so please ask questions throughout the chat feature, which is at the bottom of the screen. It says, ask a question, and I'll be able to feed those over to Katie. Um, at this point, I'd like to welcome Katie to the stage. Thank you very much for your time today. Thanks so much, Shannon, and thanks, Max, for that great talk on entrepreneurship. Very inspiring. I am going to share my screen here. Shannon, can you just confirm that you can see my screen? I can't see it yet. I'll let you know when I can. All right, what about now? We're good now. Awesome. Well, hello, everybody, and thanks for joining. I'm Katie Smith, a self-proclaimed internet enthusiast based here in New Hampshire. And today I'm going to walk you through what I do for work, why it's a little bit different than traditional technology jobs, and how I got into this role. So my official title is Manager of Cloud Engineering at Fastly. That means nothing to most people that I talk to outside of tech. So I'm going to break it down a little bit for us. So first, let's make this a little bigger and talk about Fastly. So Fastly is a San Francisco-based edge cloud delivery network, which is really just a fancy way of saying we put content like images and videos that you see on your favorite websites and apps closer to you, which makes them more secure and they load a lot faster. So you're not waiting for a picture of your favorite shoes to load on your favorite e-commerce website. So that's where I work. Uh, you're welcome to look it up, Fastly.com. But what do I actually do? It's a little bit more complicated. First, we'll break it down by looking at the title. So I'm a manager. The leadership piece is my favorite part of the job, and that means I get to lead this group of fine folks. This is Fastly's cloud engineering team, and the biggest part of my job is making sure that they're happy and fulfilled with their smiling faces that I've covered for privacy, while also aligning the team with the values and goals of the overall company so that we're all driving towards the same vision. So to recap, we know what Fastly does, what my actual title is, but what's that middle piece, that elusive cloud engineering that doesn't mean a lot. So when I tell most people, including my father, that I lead a team of cloud engineers, I think this is really what he pictures. And that narrative changes slightly when I tell fellow technologists that I lead a team of cloud engineers, but not much. The biggest difference here is that instead of imagining me up in the clouds working on weather patterns, they imagine me in front of large lines of code for eight hours a day. But I do wanna mention that cloud engineering isn't your typical eyes on the screen engineer. So to understand what I do, I wanted to share what the actual goal of my team is. So this is what our mission statement is. The true goal is to be a trusted technical advisor who advocate for our customers and support their focus on their core business strategy. So it's a liaison to the customer. We want to make them really successful. In the tech industry, this is known as customer success. There's other jobs within customer success. This is kind of the overarching theme, like you have an engineer and you have front end and back end, you have customer success, and then two main categories, account specialists and technical specialists. So account specialists have roles like customer success managers that have high level tech knowledge and deep business knowledge, and their goal is customer health. Account managers are kind of like sales, but they look for renewals instead of new business on an account, which just means that they want to make sure the customers keep buying from the company over and over again. And then you have technical specialists. This is where my team fits in. You'll hear them refer to different things in the tech industry, like technical account managers, cloud engineers, solutions, solutions architects. 
But our goal in the tech space is really, really similar. It's just making sure that the technology is usable by the customer and making it really easy for customers to use through a deep understanding of their business. Basically, the customer success team are just really smart cookies with all different skills. Some of them, like folks on my team, are programmers and developers. Others in the account space are salespeople by nature, and other people just like to talk. We bring our strengths together to achieve a single goal, which is bridging the gap between customers and companies. So for cloud engineers, yes, some days do look like this, reading code, writing code, trying to figure out what's wrong with a given program. Others look like this, a Zoom screen for eight hours that I bet many of you are familiar with. But when we're not in a pandemic, a lot of customer success roles look like this. These are all pictures that I've taken on various work trips to meet different customers. So let's dive in with what we know so far. With all these components, cloud engineers are customer facing. We're developer first who liaison customers to product sales, engineering, and other parts of the business. We troubleshoot customer issues to make sure customer configurations are optimized for the platform that we're working on. So to recap, we are technical, we code, we troubleshoot, uh, and we sit in front of lines of code when necessary. We bridge gaps between customers and companies, and we visit a lot of bridges, although it's kind of unrelated. And usually the travel slides or other exciting things that I show prompt the question of, how did you get here and how can I get there? So I'd love to tell you that this was a really easy path. It was super straightforward, but really the road I took was a little bit more jumbled. So let's dive in. As much as I'd love to talk to you all about my life story and my struggles through middle school and high school, I'm going to start at a really important part um, of my education journey. So during my senior year of high school, I really didn't have a lot of ambition. I was excited about being in high school. I loved my friends, but I didn't know what I wanted to do after, and I didn't really plan for the future. It's hard, I think most of you can relate, when you're in high school or even early years of college to picture this grand life for yourself outside of those four years. So again, didn't really plan for the future. It was a pretty big mistake on my part, but I was lucky that it worked out for me. So as you can see, I applied to SNU and I was really, really happy to get in and attend the campus. As a freshman, I was a poor college student and any college students here can probably relate. So I got a job. My first job was as a snowboard instructor at McIntyre in Manchester, but the minimum wage wasn't really helping out my poor college student status with many expensive books to buy. So I went out and got a second job at the School of Education. And this is the pivotal point of my career. I met an incredible professor named Lynn, and she was telling me about her husband who worked at this really cool place. And she offered to bring me out for a tour. I mean, I looked at the pictures online. Many of these pictures were the ones that I actually saw for the first time. So I went on the tour with Lynn, and I met her husband and totally bombed every single question I was asked. And I think I forgot to mention that this was actually more of a casual interview for an internship. To this day, I seriously cringe when I think about walking in and being asked what Dine does and barely having an understanding of what they actually do. Luckily, I talked my way through it and I got the job. So what special skills did I have as an intern? Well, I met three of the four big requirements that I was asked. The first one was that I was pursuing a technical degree. I was self-motivated and really wanted to do well. And I could communicate clearly and concisely. Finally, there was a data analysis requirement that wasn't one I possessed, but one that I was willing to work for. And above all, what really helped me get this internship was that I was super passionate and excited about working, and I was willing to learn anything they wanted me to. As a hiring manager now, I'm always looking for great skills on resumes, perfect technical skills, many coding languages, but the things that really set people apart and the ability to stand out in an interview are to learn quickly to be able to grow into a role, to want to help your team. The people I like to hire are motivated, they're passionate, they're adaptable. That's what makes people stand out, especially as interns when you don't have a lot of hard skills. So I know it can be really hard to be passionate about everything when you're talking to a bunch of companies, but learning to sell yourself is really key. And that's what got me through the next phase. So there I was, a lovely intern in the NOC. I remember getting this badge and being so excited to take a picture and send it to my family. I was super proud of that engineering label on it. And my day-to-day -day was kind of boring. I organized files, I helped keep documentation up to date, I did other various tasks that I was asked. The one thing I never did was have to fetch coffee. This was really a learning internship and something I highly encourage people to look for. 
So what this actually did was made me realize that I didn't like staring at a screen all day. I am a chatty girl, as you can probably tell, and I love to talk. So six months after my internship was up, I went home to Massachusetts. SNU was out for the summer and I went home. I became a nanny for the summer. And then my favorite person, Lynn, called me. She said her husband was looking for a full-time person similar to the role I was just in and I should apply. I was super nervous. I did what any type A person was do and I made a list of pros and cons. So pros, I could have real money. I could have health insurance. I could jumpstart my career. I got an education reimbursement if I got the job. These all seemed fantastic, but the cons. I'm only a sophomore, almost a junior. I had nowhere to live in New Hampshire because I was an on-campus student. I needed to finish my degree. All of my friends were at SNU. I wasn't mature enough. Was I even smart enough? And my summer would end early. This made me even more nervous. After some careful analysis, I was talking myself out of it. If you look at the list, the cons really seem to outweigh the pros. So I went to my dad and he said, think about when you graduate, you'll have at least two years of real experience and everybody else you're competing against will have none. So I ignored that list and I applied. I went up to New Hampshire, I interviewed for a network operations analyst role and I bombed it. I was rejected. I didn't know anything that was in the interview and I spent the entire car ride up trying to learn how to present myself in an interview instead of worrying about the questions they would actually ask me. But at this point, I was determined. I wanted that adult money. I wanted to decorate my apartment. I wanted to be seen as more mature. All of the things that I was afraid of when I made that list. So I talked to my intern manager and I applied for a different role, this time for a support analyst role. It was a little bit less technical, even though I was a computer science major. And thank goodness for my ego, I got the job. So I went from being the intern to Dine's newest full-time employee in the support rep role. Now, with this came a lot of changes. The first one was my schedule. I went from this beautiful schedule with plenty of gaps and just a couple of classes every single day to a full-time employee schedule. So you might look at this and think, well, that middle piece isn't too bad. Look at those eight hours just blocked off. But that was work, and my days were filled with things like phone calls, troubleshooting support tickets, trying to learn new products, trying to figure out what was wrong with different customer machines. But the good news was, as much work as this was, I really, really loved this job. And I found a lot of success in making technology accessible for businesses and people and explaining it in ways that regular people can understand, which was good news because I needed a lot of motivation. I wish I could say that it was super easy and I excelled at everything, but truth be told, I relied a lot on things that motivated me. As a full-time employee, I had to balance schoolwork. I switched to online classes, but I was still full time, which made it a little bit easier to manage, but I still needed to maintain a certain GPA to retain my grants and education reimbursements from Dine. The bigger motivation, as you can imagine, was paying bills. This was new to me. I now had rent and electric and other utility bills that I had to pay. And finally, I really cared about maintaining a social life with my college friends who just didn't seem to understand why I was so stressed. Luckily, those bills were non-negotiable and I was terrified of getting fired because I had no fallback plan until my degree was complete. So I took a year off of school while I got myself settled. At the time, I was really embarrassed. I didn't tell anybody, including my parents, but I moved into a new role and my boss said that if I wanted to do great things, I really should finish my degree. I was only about 18 months out from doing so and back to school I went. Sundays were now filled with classwork, work was filled with, well, work, and I pushed through and graduated. But to this day, the biggest thing that stands out in my resume isn't my experience. It's those soft skills that I was talking about earlier. It's that I want to learn. I really care deeply about my team and I'm excited to come to work and learn something new. Even when I don't necessarily feel like working, I try to learn something every day. And that's what helped me get through this final phase that I'll talk about today. As the saying goes, the years keep coming and they don't stop coming. And before I knew it, I had been at Dine for a few years. I'd moved from a support rep to a team lead. And then a career opportunity came up. It was at Dine and it was called technical account manager. Basically the same job of talking with customers that I love doing in support, but I wouldn't have to be on call. I could build deep, longstanding relationships with people. I could travel and I could make more money. Tough decision, but I applied. And after some intense learning about sales from some colleagues and studying our documentation and several rounds of interviews, I got it. I was super excited and they handpicked me. So I was now the newest technical account manager. And this is when I found out about customer success, something that you already know about from earlier. 
But at the time, this was a really new idea in tech. So I did the same things that I didn't support. I found ways to learn more. I found how, how I could be the best at this. I did that through conferences, both in person and virtual. I watched TED Talks. I joined LinkedIn groups. I found wherever I could get good information and I would learn it. And that put me in a great position to go from a technical account manager to our team lead of technical account management. This meant that I now had people that reported to me and it was my job to keep them happy. Then about two years ago, I made the choice to say goodbye to my first ever company, Dine, the one that took a chance on me. And I moved on to Fastly, which is my current company. Of course, I'd be remiss not to mention that this was the course of like, I think a six or seven year career. I had a million people rooting for me, but I always like to share what I learned. So most asked question, what did you learn? I like to frame this as this is what worked for me. I think it's good advice, but everybody is different. First off, I am super competitive. I make everything a competition uh, and it suits me well, especially in a support environment. I wanted to be the best. So I set out to learn the most so I could solve the most tickets and help the most people. I also encourage people to learn everything you can. Be the person that people want to go to to answer questions. It really makes you invaluable. Next, say yes to everything. There were a lot of points throughout my journey that I was really scared, especially to that first interview because there were so many negatives, but you need to look at your long-term goals. Mine was just to be successful and to have a job in tech. So I said yes to the things that got me there. And finally, make sure you're doing what you love. So I don't mean that if you love TikTok, set out to be a TikTok star, or that if you love video games, you should just play video games all the time. More like, if you like video games, maybe pursue a degree in video game design. Or if you like to talk, like I do, find a job where you can talk all day. And if you don't like to talk, a call center or support job, probably not for you. So I love going through this journey. I love doing talks like this because I think my path is a little bit strange. I got my first full-time job before I finished my degree. I moved out before I finished my degree, but I'm really proud of where I've been. And it reminds me that I have a very long way to go. And I think Shannon, we have 10 minutes left if there's any questions. Excellent. And just a reminder, there is a question block at the bottom. It says, ask a question. So if anyone uh, has questions, please add them there and I can read them. Um, in the meantime, though, I, thank you so much for your conversation, Katie. I think that the way you've described your journey is is so apt. You know, it's never a straight path, right? So I think embracing the fact that you are going to have twists and turns over a journey is, is really important. What's one thing that you would tell your teenage self about your career today? I think I would tell them just to believe in yourself. There were a lot of points where I didn't think I was the smartest person in the room, and I'm definitely still not, but I believe in the things that I actually know. Um, when I was a teenager, I was really hesitant to take on risks or take on these new big opportunities because they seemed scary, and there were many times that I really wish I would have just gone for it. I think that makes so much sense. What skills do you think you developed early in your career or maybe even in your first job that you think have made an impact in who you are today? The biggest one is learning how to communicate with people and learning how to sell yourself. I know the things that I'm good at and I'm not afraid to tell people that I'm good at them. Uh, definitely be humble in it, but make sure that you know when you need to be pitching and when you need to just be listening. Uh, the other big skill kind of in the same breath as that is being an active listener. When you're talking to people, make sure you're actually listening to what they have to say and you're not just intending to respond. It helps you create more meaningful conversation uh, and it helps you grow closer to people that can eventually help you out in finding different career paths. Now, it's hard to sometimes ask for help throughout your career path. Do you have any advice on how to maybe find those mentors or how to ask for help when you need it uh, throughout your path? Absolutely, yes. I am a huge advocate for mentors. I do. I participate in a mentoring program through a couple of different universities in New Hampshire uh, and through some tech organizations as well. And there's a big difference here where you have your mentor, which is the person that you go to for help. This can be, you know, kind of like an official person, maybe an instructor that you really trust. Uh, but you should also seek out to find sponsors, which are people that are going to be in the room when it's time for you to get promoted or time for you to, you know, either be accepted or rejected from a job and you want somebody that can advocate for you and advocate for your skills 
when you're looking to find people like this, it doesn't have to be a formal process. You don't have to sign up for some kind of a random match mentor program. You just need to find people that you can trust. For me, one of those people was Lynn, who, as you can see, made a huge impact on my career. And the reason that that worked for me is because she trusted me. She believed in me. She knew that I could do great things. And she helped me figure out the different skills that I would need to take those like college student skills of being able to type really fast and organize things in the career of in the student education center and bring those to Dine where I was doing similar things, but in a more technical nature. What mistakes do you think you may have made in your early career? Uh, a and lot. how did you learn from them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first mistake I made when I was an intern was that I was really scared to ask for help. Um, I worked in a very fast paced environment, which meant that there were people that I was supposed to be learning from were always had other priorities. And instead of slowing down or putting time on their calendars to learn about what they were doing, I just kind of like hid behind my monitor and tried to figure out things on my own. Um, I can remember when I turned into a full time employee at Dine, actually had some credibility and I overheard somebody saying like, oh, who organized this file in our documentation? Like, this is all wrong. It's horrible. And it was me when I was an intern. And if I just asked for help, that would have been different. Uh, but don't be afraid to seek out help, especially as an intern, even though you may see yourself as lower on the totem pole, this experience they're getting is really important and you owe it to yourself to ask for help. I think it's important to recognize mistakes too, right? You, you know, if you had owned up to it then and said, wow, this is what I've learned, maybe it would have helped someone else. What advice uh, do you have for someone who is trying to make that decision of, you know, how much education versus how, you know, what they need for soft skills um, when looking at positions? Yeah, I always recommend read through the job description and understand exactly what they're asking for. If you're looking at an internship position, a lot of the time they're looking for somebody that's self-starter, but that has some kind of a technical experience. You don't necessarily need to go to a four-year school to do that. I am a huge advocate for going to a community college like NHTI or MCC for at least the first two years while you figure out what you're looking to do. It doesn't make sense to spend you know thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on a degree when you're not sure. Uh, there's obviously cases where people do know exactly where they want to be, and that's great. But don't you know, don't seek out to have to work only on those hard skills. The soft skills, I think, are almost more important, uh, especially in today's environment when big companies like Google, Facebook aren't looking for those four year degrees anymore. Yeah, that certainly has been a change that we've seen in education over the last few years is the transition more to boot camp style or um, what you've learned on the job. That's exciting. Well, I think that, um, you know, you've answered so many questions and given such a good insight into who you are and, you know, what a cloud engineer actually does. What's next for you? Where do you see um, your next career move or, or over the next five years, what you'll be doing? Yeah, I have big dreams. And that's some other advice that I have is don't be afraid to dream really big. Um, I, in college, like I was uh, in high school, I was like a really average student. I played sports, but not super well. Um, I took honors classes, but not super well. And I never thought that I would have this like huge career in tech. My ultimate goal is to be like some kind of an executive leader. I love strategy and figuring out how you can make decisions now that impact the future. Um, I think that's my big goal. Next, I think it's just continuing to scale out my team and continuing to help them grow. Uh, it's really rewarding to not only help myself when I'm making decisions for a bigger group, but actually watch these people that report into me have different career progressions and figure out their own paths. So I'll stay in the same space for now. Um, I really love working here fastly. I love everything that we do here. So. All right, I'll come up and join you. And uh, again, thank you so much for your time today. I, I love your story and I love uh, the way that you told it. So thank you again. Um, looks like oh, we may have one final question. Does Fastly have an internship program? Yeah, that's a great question. So Fastly is based in San Francisco. I think they partner a lot with companies based in San Francisco because of that. Right now, I don't think we have any internships open because of the pandemic. But if you're ever interested, you're always welcome to keep an eye on our career page. You can just Google Fastly.com. I think it's forward slash careers. Uh, and any positions we have open can be seen there. Or if people have questions, they're happy. I'm happy to answer them if they reach out to the New Hampshire Tech Alliance. I think Shane and you and Julie both have my contact information and can put them in touch. Excellent. Well, thank you again. And yes, anyone that's joining or viewing at a later date, if you have any questions for Katie, uh, feel free to reach out to the New Hampshire Tech Alliance and we'll be happy to help make those connections. So 
thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your time and thank you to those who have joined and learned a little bit more about cloud engineering and a path to get there as well as entrepreneurship this morning. Thank you. Thank you.